All right. If you detect that I'm a little upset in my voice, you'd be right, because this entire sailboat was textured in the tutorial video, which was subsequently lost by QuickTime Player uh, in this video, and I apologize. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this file, remove some of the texturing information, and go over some of the steps I took to produce what you're seeing here, which is the final textured sailboat. I had three I had three files that I had prepared and uploaded to my Google Drive in advance for use. And what I did was I selected these and I went to get link. And then I pasted the link into Safari and copied them onto the clipboard via long tap and then pasted them into my scene document via the clipboard. And then they became available to me in my user texture library. Now I'm gonna remove the textures from the sale just to show you kind of the process involved with texture mapping. The basic gist is textures are two-dimensional and surfaces are three-dimensional. And you have to map a two-dimensional object or a two-dimensional picture to a three-dimensional surface. Now for the sail, it works out pretty nicely because the sail is essentially um, a 2D object as well. I mean, there isn't much depth to it. So when I just go to the uh, Object Properties or Material button and go to the texture and pick my canvas material, it just kind of applies it to the, to the, um, to the surface. And because this object, the uh, sail, was made with the sketch tool, the sketch tool and many of the other um, surface generators in Virto Studio automatically generate um, decent texture coordinates for you. <clears throat> so in a lot of cases, you'll find that you don't have to manually edit them. Um, however, there are some cases where you do. Um, Another case where it was somewhat automatic were these poles. All I did with these poles was I went to the texture editor and I selected my wood and I have my wood texture applied with default texture coordinates for the cylinder, which is the pole. And the neat thing about using the pole or the cylinder object is that even on the tops and bottoms you got this nice optimal texture coordinate that you can just use. Now, in cases where you need to manually edit the texture coordinates, like I had to do with this boat, um, what you need to do is basically select the faces um, that you are interested in mod modifying the texture coordinates for, like I'm doing here. And then pop over to Face Texture Coordinate Editor. And what you basically are seeing here is, hold on one sec, I selected one face too many. I'm just going to deselect this rogue polygon here and this one. So when you go into the texture coordinate editor, what you are seeing is the 2D mapping um, of the surface onto the 3D. So when you move these around, you will actually notice the texture coordinates change. And you can rotate them by twirling, or what's more useful is scale, because a lot of times it might come in like this, which is makes it look like the texture is too low of a resolution. So if you just reverse pinch, you can modify the scale, or you can even, you know, uh, touch individual polygons uh, or points here and move them around as well. Whichever tool you have selected up here will affect um, your uh, texture coordinate movement on the, on the texture coordinate editor. Um, one thing that's worth noting here is that uh, for this sailboat, I didn't have to do anything too crazy. A lot, of, a lot of the cases, the texture coordinates were in decent shape to start with. However, there were some cases where I did. For example, at the end of the first video, um, these two pieces were in one shape. So what I had to do was actually split them off so that I can get that white bottom of the hull like I wanted before. And I had to do that by essentially selecting the faces on the top and um, then doing an inverse of that selection by going to select inverse up here. And then I went to face separate, which separated those off to another surface. And that way I can work with the texture coordinates and the normals on this bottom uh, surface down here, the hull, without affecting the texture coordinates of the top, which was very useful. 
Um, another thing that um, I did was, and this is probably the most useful thing that I want to make sure I cover uh, in this video, even though I'm doing it again and I'm going quick, I want to make sure that I, I talk about this. In a lot of cases, the texture coordinates of the side will look wrong. Uh, and the way I handled that was I select them and I went to the texture coordinate editor and I went to this auto map feature, which has some modes that really help um, texture coordinate mapping go faster. And the one that I use the most is screen projection, which basically takes, what you, what you want to do is you want to have a dead on perspective. So what you're actually looking at is almost like flat on. And then when you do screen projection, it will actually map the vertices based off of how they look when you're looking at them. So um, an easy way to explain this is maybe if I were to take this hull and just select the whole thing and look at it from a weird angle and then go to the, uh, the tech chord editor and then go to auto map screen projection, you see the image is basically a projection of what you were looking at. So whatever angle you look at, you can kind of create your two-dimensional texture coordinates um, that way. It's a way to really get it done quickly and if you don't care too much about the exact precision of everything you can get actually some pretty nice results. As a matter of fact um, I would have saved myself a lot of time last video if I had just done that with the whole um, hull of the ship or uh, top of the cabin because that looks actually pretty decent. Uh, last thing I'm going to talk about uh, is the bottom. Um, I actually did not apply a, a standard texture map to it. The hull is just white with no texture applied up here. But what I did was I used the um, the bump mapping shader. I picked that and then I picked the bump texture um, that I included. And that's what makes the hull look more shiny and realistic. Uh, it looks like it's, uh, the way I said was it looks like it's been beat up by the ocean a lot. And I kind of wanted to get that effect. And that's pretty neat. And uh, I combine that with um, some higher ambient lighting to make it look more white and I up the highlights all the way to white so the shininess uh, factor really shows on, on the hull. Um, that's basically it. I didn't have to do anything too crazy um, besides that uh, and I basically was able to use the auto map feature quite a bit to do a lot of the work for me. Um, so I'm not too upset that I lost the original video because uh, I might have to do even a third or a second texture mapping video to talk about some of the, the more precise uh, aspects of it. But at least this gets you started on how to do basic texture mapping in Virto Studio. And you can see it makes a big difference. I mean, the model looks a lot more realistic now as opposed to the way it looked before, which almost looked fake. So that's basically texture mapping. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, that's the end of the video.